Uh, so one more thing I wanted to highlight uh, for this lab that's kind of important is uh, the convention for the IF bits in your CPSR. So if you look at the ARM 926EJ manual, which is uh, in your VM, uh, when the two bits are set, uh, the, the interrupts are disabled. So if you clear the bits, then the interrupts are enabled. So. I also wanted to clarify one more thing. So when I say go in IRQ mode here uh, on line 35 in your vectors.s, uh, what I'm saying here is to load the mode uh, for the CPSR because we're actually emulating this in Kimu. So we sort of have to uh, add code to do the mode change manually. Uh, and so I could actually give you the two pieces of code here. So. Sorry, this wasn't very clear. So. So for go in IRQ mode, uh, I have two instructions. Uh, one where I uh, mask out the mode bits, essentially, to uh, I clear them to zero. And in the following instruction, I put the uh, actual encoding for the IRQ mode, which is 10010, or hex 12. So if you remember, so the IRQ mode bits is 10010. So. so all I'm doing here is uh, setting the mode bits in the CPSR register, which has been saved into R0, and setting it to uh, the value in this table. And so you guys tell me what goes here then. So to, if we want to go back into supervisor mode or emulate going back to supervisor mode, we have to load the mode with uh, the appropriate bits for supervisor, which is uh, actually 10011. So. so sort of what happens here is uh, since we're emulating this in Kimu, the uh, base address uh, for the vector table isn't actually at zero because it starts Kimu starts running code at a, a fixed offset address, and so what ends up happening is uh, the code that's been written here it actually ends up copying uh, the vector start to vector end. Uh, it copies this vector table into the uh, beginning of memory, so at zero. Um, so that's done right here with the branch with link to copy vectors function. Um, and the copy vectors function is actually defined in uh, inter.c. So go here. So copy vectors uh, takes vector start and end and uh, you see it copies it to destination 0. Uh, and then it just starts copying all the entries in the vector table. And all the interrupt handlers are actually defined in this C file. Um, 
And the one that we're trying to emulate is the IR cube for the serial UART uh, driver. So uh, essentially, this lab expects that all the characters that are input from the keyboard are going to be put into UART zero DR, which is the data register. Uh, and it's actually offset uh, by zero from this base address. And this was actually uh, provided in the ARM 926 uh, uh, manual references. So if you go there, they have a, a prime cell UART manual, uh, which actually goes through how the UART device works. Um, but suffice it to say, this is an example of the memory mapped I.O. that I've been talking about. You can access these hardware peripherals uh, just using memory addresses and just reading, uh, reading it directly from memory. If you notice, uh, there's the volatile key keyword being used uh, to define this register. All that means is the memory contents will keep changing, and it's just a warning to uh, the, uh, the actual uh, OS that's running this to uh, say that that register value can change. And so, and since it is a serial driver and we're emulating it, um, um, it has to be defined as volatile. So once you have that data in that register, all you have to do is read it. And so you can, uh, so since we're trying to do something interesting here, uh, we want to see whatever character we input from our keyboard uh, get output uh, after being, uh, after adding one to it. So. All you do is uh, you take the UART zero DR and uh, add one, and reassign it back to uh, UART DR, just like Dave said. So. And once that's done, um, the other part that we had to uh, modify was vectors.s. So this actually defines uh, part of our handler. So this is a example of mixed assembly in C code. You can have some uh, vector ha uh, interrupt handlers defined in C and some of them defined in uh, the assembly code. Uh, you can actually, if you go into an inter.c, um, you can see that the some of these variables are defined with the extern keyword. So what that means is uh, these are defined external to the C file. And so uh, if you remember, vector start and end was defined in the assembly file that we'd seen. So the way to mix, uh, uh, to reference assembly code in C is uh, you just define it as external. And when the linker uh, comes across these symbols, it links uh, these variables to the one in the assembly object file. So Right. So in vectors.s, uh, the solution is actually located in your doc uh, in the, on the host. Actually, if you go to dot dot interrupts, actually, so, so it's located in projects uh, forward slash dot interrupts. So what's happening here is so once we have uh, done our interesting little bit here with the UART driver. Um, we also need to ensure that uh, the reset handler, which is what gets run the first time Kimi boots up, right? Uh, if you remember, uh, on power on arm always uh, executes the reset handler, um, and, you, and when you when you enter a reset, you're put into supervisor mode. So you need to set up the supervisor stack, um, and this is actually kind of defined in the memory map uh, in your linker script, which is the inter.ld. <coughs> And it kind of defines uh, where the stack should be put in memory and all those uh, other information. Um, and then it actually call, makes a call to copy vectors to relocate the uh, vector table in Kimu from wherever it's put uh, in the binary to 
uh, zero. And once that's done, um, we actually want to go into IRQ mode and uh, start up our serial driver. So in order to do that, we first have to get the mode from the CPSR and, um, and all the contents of the CPSR, put it into R0. Uh, we'll treat R0 as our temp variable here. Um, and once we've uh, copied the CPSR, I gave you these two lines of code, which essentially sets the mode bits to IRQ mode. Um, and at that point, uh, you're actually emulating switching to IRQ mode, right? Um, once you've done that, you have to copy the R1, the modified mode bits, back into CPSR. If you remember the convention, um, so when you use MRS, you provide the register followed by the special register, which is CPSR. So this is saying move to uh, register from special register. Um, and it copies the CPSR into R0. Here, we're writing it back after modifying the IRQ mode bits. Um, and we copy it using move from special, reg uh, special register to core register. Uh, CPSR followed by R1. So once you're in IRQ mode, um, you have to set up the IRQ stack. This is sort of uh, done for us because uh, by the hardware, but since we're emulating here, uh, we need to do that. If you remember, the stack pointer is banked in the IRQ mode, so it gets its own special stack space. So all you do is you say, uh, there's already IRQ stack top defined for you uh, in the linker script. So, and then all you have to do is, once you have set up the IRQ, uh, you have set up the IRQ mode, you've emulated the switch to the IRQ mode, and you've uh, also switched the stack pointer. Once that's done, then we can um, enable IRQ. And the way to do that, if you remember, the convention is zero enables IRQs, one disables the IRQs. So you just end up uh, clearing uh, bit eight or bit seven if you're using zero-based indexing. Um, and uh, that just translates to eight here and hex eight. Once that's done, to go back into supervisor mode again, uh, after enabling these IRQs, you do uh, move. If you remember, I copied CPSR into R0. Uh, but the modified values, I was using R1. So here I just copy it back, um, move from special register to core register. Uh, move to special register from core register, um, R0. So it copies the value from R0 back into CPSR. And then it starts executing whatever uh, main code is there. Uh, this could be your kernel or whatever. So. So once you do this, uh, you should be able to actually run it and see the output characters. So this is the kind of work it takes to uh, put an emulator together for a bare metal. So uh, we wouldn't have had to do all these things for uh, a actual bare metal hardware, right? It sort of does this for us. but. Um, this should give you an idea of how sort of the vector tables work and uh, how the mode changes happen, um, things like that. So, are there any questions? Oh, so you, uh, are you looking at the QEMU screen? Yeah. Yeah, don't look at the QEMU, look at the host. Okay. So, the, the bare metal actually doesn't have any uh, IO. So, uh, it's actually outputting to the host terminal screen. So if you start typing, you should start seeing output. <laughs> Sorry, if I didn't mention. <laughs> so first, you run build and start running build. You have to escape the focus from Kimu, which sort of grabs your focus. Hit Alt Control, go back to the host terminal here. And if you type A, you'll start getting a B out. It's just adding one. If you type C, you'll get a D out. Yeah, you have to sort of ignore the key screen. So. 